Welcome back to Around the NHL presented by Chase. I'm Michelle Jingris alongside Anson Carter, and we now welcome in NHL Network studio analyst EJ Raddick. EJ, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Nice to be with you, and we're only uh, a few days away now, so let's, let's get to Saturday. Yes, that's what we said. We've been approaching this with uh, cautious optimism has been the theme of the show today, but we are very, very excited that we at least get to talk hockey and that hopefully – there is a light at the end of the tunnel and they'll be playing games very soon. Yeah, we have some exhibition games coming up this week. So that'll be the first little taste so we can see how it looks. Apparently the, the, the sites uh, in both in Toronto and Edmonton, they've been doing, the NHL has been doing a lot of work to create like kind of a different look. It's mm-hmm. going to be different for fans. There's more cameras. It's going to be very, very interesting to watch. Hopefully, uh, you know, like I said, it looks like we're on the right path. So I'm with you. Cautiously optimistic. So before we even get there, I have a question for you. If notable players, you know, don't make the trip, like I read Victor Hedman was attending to a personal issue and he was going to travel on Friday. So he didn't make the initial trip with the team. What is the re-entry protocol for the bubble or the entry protocol, I guess? Is it the same? Can players join later or is there something that they have to follow if they come at a later date? Well, that's, that's a good question. I, I'm, I'm sure that there is a certain protocol that they have to follow. It's probably similar to the guys that go in that have already got into the bubble. But, uh, you know, that is something the NHL has kept kind of a tight grip on, uh, on some of these different rules and regulations that they have. But I would think that they're going to be really careful with having people come in late just, just because they don't want someone to come in and create a problem that will – be a problem for everyone eventually if that is an issue so I think that they'll have something in place they'll be very careful obviously Victor Hedman is an important part of the puzzle for the Tampa Bay Lightning now the Lightning have some time to kind of get ready because they have those round robin games so even if he gets in and he is unable to participate uh, in the first part of that that's probably fine for the Tampa Bay Lightning I talked to their coach John Cooper and he said they're looking at these games these round robin games not so much for the seeding but to get their team prepared to play when they have to go in the first round of the playoffs. Eej, good to see you. Whenever I see your face yeah. on the television, it means hockey's back. Yes, yes, yes that's true. <laughs> good to see you. But I want to talk about, I mean, Michelle's talking about on the ice. I want to talk about something that just happened uh, off the ice. Arizona is finally back in the playoffs again. And out of the blue, their president, <laughs> general manager, John Chaika, <laughs> resigned. You know, if you listen to yeah. the press release from the Coyotes, he quit on them. You know, what yeah. do you make about all this? Yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting story, no doubt, Anson. Uh, the, it was certainly a contentious split, so much so that uh, the owner, uh, Alex Marullo of the Coyotes, is talking about now having the commissioner mediate between the Coyotes and John Shika because Shika just signed uh, not too long ago a long-term extension. So uh, the way I understand the story is, is that there was uh, a team – uh, that was uh, either approached him or, or perhaps Shaika approached that team about some kind of opportunity. There was a discussion about whether the Coyotes would give permission for that discussion. Apparently it was originally given and then it was rescinded. And uh, I think things have taken a bad turn from there, uh, so much so that uh, now the two sides have split. Uh, you know, there's, there were some nasty words exchanged, uh, certainly by both sides and some other people who are who are uh, NHL sources, so to speak, uh, in covering that story yesterday. So uh, the one thing we know, he's going to be out of the mix. Uh, we will have to determine whether or not he is going to get paid his, the rest of his contract or some deal will be arranged between the Coyotes and Shaika. And then is there another team out there? Is there this mystery team that, uh, you know, that is looking to hire John Shaika? So uh, it's unusual timing for sure. Some have said, Anson, they, they think, it's really bad timing, you know, with, the, with this thing starting up again. I don't know if it really is because the general manager, like the trade deadline has passed. We're not at the draft. I mean, you know Anson from playing. The players are, are focused on the task at hand with the coaching staff. They've got a real experienced group there with Rick Tockett and our buddy Johnny Mack. So, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think it should impact the Coyotes as they get ready on the ice for playing the National Predators, but certainly an interesting story that just kind of bubbled up over the last few days. The defending Stanley Cup champions, I feel like we have to talk about the St. Louis Blues. They finished at the top of the Western Conference again this year. Do they have what it takes to make another amazing run like they did last year? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think so. They've got just about everybody back from their run last year, with the exception of, of Patty Maroon, who was an important player for them. Now he's in Tampa, and, you know, maybe he's going to be an important player for the Lightning. But, uh, you know, I think they've got everybody back, and they've got something that teams usually don't have that win the Stanley Cup. They've got rest. I mean, they've had this four and a half months or so of, of, of time off uh, to get healed and to get ready, like, just like everybody else. So, I mean, I think that's a huge factor here for the Blues. This is a really good team. And I think, you know, the interesting thing about the Blues to me is I feel like they do – it depends upon how the game is officiated. And, Anson, you could probably understand this really well. It's like if the officials call a tight game, I think the Blues, it's harder for them because mm -hmm. now they want to play on the edge. They want to give you the extra shot. They want, to, they want to play physical. If the officials call a tight game, now the Blues have to kill more penalties. If the officials let them play more and let the Blues have that kind of game, it works to their favor. I, I like the Blues' chances. Obviously, Bennington will have to play well again. He was great last year. There's no reason to think he won't. Uh, they're going to be a tough out, no question. Yeah, I picked St. Louis to repeat each, uh, myself yeah. personally. Wow. They've got Terrence. You had them in game back. seven last year, Anson. In I did. You had them. And I called the score, too. Yes, you did. <laughs> I remember. I hope you bought a, like, lottery ticket after that or a scratch-off <laughs> or something. I totally should have. I mean, just for that exact point you brought up, you know, officiating changes over the course of the regular season. It's super tight in October, and then it relaxes, and then they let the game or the players play the game come the postseason. So I want to see what the officials are going to do. Are they going to be on the guys right away or are they going to let the guys play? But I want to continue my trend of talking about topics off the ice. <laughs> All right. I want to get things crack a lacking. Let's talk about the Seattle <laughs> Kraken each. Yeah. Great nickname, tremendous presentation. How well positioned are they going forward? And what do you think of the nickname? Well, I, I, I like, I can, I, I mean, it's not, the, the my favorite thing I've ever heard, but come on, I, I like it. I, I think I feel like you're being nice right now. <laughs> right. I know. Listen, listen. It's I'm just giving you my honest opinion. It's not like I don't know if I would have went that direction, but like you know what I like about the ownership group there in Seattle is they really listen to the fans, and that was something that was a name that the fans really liked, and it just mm -hmm. kept uh, coming to the surface when they would do these uh, kind of uh, tests with fans about what names they were liking and interested in. So. I think the rollout was terrific. I mean, you couldn't have done, to me, a better rollout. I think the uniforms, the color scheme, terrific. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I think there's a lot of fun to be had with that name to begin with. So uh, I like that. And how, you know, the, the thing is, how are they positioned moving forward? Mm -hmm. I think they're positioned really in, in a pretty good spot, Anson, because when you think about what's gone on, you know, we're going to be in a situation with the salary cap where it's going to be basically flat. Teams are going to have to make decisions about players that they didn't anticipate having to make. So there might be players that are available to the Seattle franchise. They will be players that will be available to the Seattle franchise through the expansion draft that may not have been there if the cap had continued to go up and we were in a normal circumstance. EJ, great stuff. We appreciate you stopping by. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Anson. Of course, Deej. Good seeing you. When we come back, we'll have the latest on the high-flying Edmonton Oilers when around the NHL presented by Chase Returns.